So welcome back. I'm Alan Jay and welcome to Lincoln Central with your 17th amazing trick tutorial in the basic trick series. In this tutorial we will examine how the sine, cosine and tangent ratios change as an angle theta completes a full circle of 360 degrees. To explain this we start with the origin at the centre of a unit circle. The x and y axes pass through the origin to positive and negative values. These axes divide the circle into four quarters or quadrants. These are given numbers. The first quadrant is from 0 to 90 degrees. The second is from 90 to 180. The third is from 180 to 270. And the fourth quadrant is from 270 to 360. If we now draw a straight line from the origin to an arbitrary point P, coordinates x, y, we have a radius to the circle. Rotating the radius about the origin in an anticlockwise fashion, you can see how our angles of increasing value are swept out all the way to 360 degrees. We will be looking at an angle theta as it increases in value from one quadrant to the next. The value of the trig functions sine, cosine and tangent are gleaned from the xy values of the point P and the radius length, which is 1. So straight away, looking in the first quadrant at the triangle made by the radius, which is the hypotenuse, and the sides x and y, you can see that sine theta equals y over 1, cosine theta equals x over 1, and tan theta equals y over x. Now since in this quadrant, quadrant 1, both x and y are positive, sine theta, cosine theta, and tan theta are all positive. Looking at the second diagram, if we rotate the radius around a bit further so it sits in quadrant 2, the angle it represents is somewhere between 90 and 180 degrees. x is negative and y is positive, so here sine theta is plus y over 1, therefore positive. Cosine theta is minus x over 1, therefore negative. Tan theta is plus y over minus x, therefore negative. Now looking at the third diagram, if we rotate the radius around a bit further still, so it sits in quadrant 3, the angle it represents is somewhere between 180 and 270 degrees. x is negative and y is negative, so sin theta is minus, minus y over 1, therefore negative. Cosine theta is minus x over 1, therefore negative. Tan theta is minus y over minus x, therefore positive. Looking at the fourth diagram, if we rotate the radius around still further, so it sits in quadrant 4, the angle it represents is somewhere between 270 and 360 degrees. x is positive and y is negative, so sine theta is minus y over 1, therefore negative. Cosine theta is plus x over 1, therefore positive. Tan theta is minus y over plus x, therefore negative. Our table of results for sine, cosine and tangent is now complete. But it can be summarized in a simple, easy to remember diagram. And here it is. As we go anticlockwise through all four quadrants, we have all, sine, tan, cos. This is when the function is positive. So in the first quadrant, sine, cosine and tangent are all positive. In the second quadrant, only the sine function is positive. In the third quadrant, only the tangent function is positive. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, only the cosine function is positive. Before we get to the problems, there are two very small topics to cover, negative angles and very large angles. Well, you know how we normally measure angles anticlockwise from the positive x-axis. Negative angles are simply angles measured clockwise from the positive x-axis. To work out the sine, cosine or tangent functions for these, all you have to do is add 360 degrees to them. So an angle of minus 60 degrees 
becomes 300 degrees and we just take it from there. Your calculator will do the rest. Very large angles are those greater than 360 degrees. In other words, greater than one rotation. Such angles are 565 degrees, 750 degrees, 1200 degrees. We can easily bring these down to size by taking away 360 degrees until we get a remainder that is less than 360. So 565 degrees is the same as 565 minus 360, which is 205 degrees. 750 degrees minus 360 degrees gives us 390 degrees. If we take another 360 away, we get 390 minus 360, which equals 30 degrees. 1200 degrees minus 360 degrees is 840 degrees. Taking away another 360 degrees, we get 480 degrees. And taking away yet another 360 degrees, we get our final answer of 120 degrees. And now to the problems. Example number one. Solve these equations for theta, where theta is greater than 0 degrees and less than 360 degrees. State the quadrant number for each solution. Answer to two decimal places. Number 1. Sine theta equals 0 0.60 to tan theta equals minus 1.2. Number three, cosine theta equals minus 0 0.67. The first thing we need to do is to visualize the problem. So we start with our axes and the angles anti-clockwise from 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270 and 360 degrees or back to 0. I label the four quadrants 1, 2, 3, for anti-clockwise. The angle theta has a positive sign, so it lies as an acute angle in the first quadrant. But a positive sign also corresponds to an obtuse angle in the second quadrant. The supplementary angle, the one when added to the obtuse angle, makes 180 degrees, is the mirror of our acute angle in the y-axis. So to find that obtuse angle, all we have to do is take the acute angle away from 180 degrees. OK, so let's find theta. Theta is equal to sine minus 1 of 0 0.60 and this comes to an angle of 36.8699 degrees which is equivalent to 36.87 degrees to two decimal places. Yeah, this is in the first quadrant. Okay, the other solution where uh, sine theta is positive is in the second quadrant. So we can write theta is equal to 180 degrees minus 36.87 degrees which is equal to 143.13 degrees so here are our solutions 36.87 degrees first quadrant 143.13 degrees second quadrant as before we start with our axes angles and quadrants 0 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees to 360 degrees and quadrants 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now if we choose the tan minus 1 function on our calculator 
and type in minus 1.2, we get the angle minus 50.1944 degrees, which is minus 50.19 degrees to two decimal places. This angle is outside of a range. The question stipulates that theta must be between 0 and 360 degrees. Now tan theta is only negative in the second and fourth quadrants, so the angle must be a reflex angle in quadrant 4 and an obtuse angle in quadrant 2. Writing this down, theta equals tan minus 1 minus 1.2 so theta is equal to minus 50.1944, which is minus 50.19 to two decimal places. Quadrant two, we have theta is equal to 180 degrees minus 50.19 degrees, which makes theta equal to 129.81 degrees. In quadrant four, theta equals 360 degrees minus 50.19 degrees, which makes theta equal to 309.81 degrees. And now to part three. As before, we start with our axes, angles, and quadrants. Zero, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees to 360 degrees and quadrants 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now if we choose the cos minus 1 function on our calculator and type in minus 0 0.67 we get the angle 132.0671 degrees which is 132.07 degrees to two decimal places. This angle is clearly in quadrant 2. Now cosine theta is only negative in the second and third quadrants, so the angle must be an obtuse angle in quadrant 2 and a reflex angle in quadrant 3. OK, writing all this down, we have theta is equal to cosine minus 1 minus 0 0.67, and that's equal to 132.0671 degrees which makes theta equal to 132.07 degrees to two decimal places. Okay, that's in quadrant two. So 132.07 degrees in quadrant two. Okay, the supplementary angle is equal to 180 degrees minus 132.07 degrees, which makes the supplementary angle equal to 47.93 degrees. Okay, in quadrant three, we have theta is equal to 180 degrees plus 47.93 degrees, which makes theta equal to 227.93 degrees. Example number two, where theta is between zero and 360 degrees. Find the other angle that is the same sine value as 166, 113, 132 degrees. Find the other angle that has the same tan value as 194, 225, 207 degrees. Find the other angle that is the same cosine value as 295, 323 and 301 degrees. You'll notice that all these angles in the first part of the question are in the second quadrant. Their sine values are all positive. Remember, all sine, tan cos, and they have the very same values as their supplementary angles. That is the angles that they make up 180 degrees with. Looking at the diagram, the supplementary angle is the mirror image of the acute angle in the first quadrant. To calculate the value of the acute angle, all we have to do is subtract the obtuse angle from 180 degrees. So our required angles are, first one, 180 minus 166 equals 14 degrees. Second, 180 minus 113 equals 67 degrees. Third one, 
180 degrees minus 132 degrees equals 48 degrees. You will notice that all these angles in the second part of the question are reflex and in the third quadrant. Their tan values are all positive in this quadrant. Remember, all sine tan cos and they have the very same values as the acute angles in quadrant one. Looking at the diagram, the acute angle that the radius makes with the x-axis is vertically opposite to the acute angle in the first quadrant. So in order to calculate the value of the acute angle, all we have to do is subtract 180 degrees from the angle. So our required angles are 1, 194 minus 180 equals 14 degrees, 2, 225 minus 180 degrees equals 45 degrees, and 3, 207 minus 180 equals 27 degrees. You'll notice that all these angles in the third part of the question are reflex, and in the fourth quadrant this time. Their cosine values are all positive in this quadrant. Remember, all sine, tan, cos, and they have the very same values as the acute angles in quadrant one. Looking at the fourth quadrant, the acute angle that the radius makes with the x-axis is a mirror image of the acute angle in the first quadrant. So, in order to calculate the value of the acute angle, all we have to do is subtract the reflex angle from 360 degrees. So our required angles are 1, 360 minus 295, which gives us 65 degrees, 2, 360 minus 323 degrees equals 37 degrees, and 3, 360 minus 301 gives us 59 degrees. And that's all folks. In fact, that is all for this particular series, Basic Trig. But don't despair, there will be other topics coming soon. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and be the first to see all the latest releases. See you soon.